purpose of this training is to give teachers ideas on how to provide small groups and one-on-one -on -one instruction remotely via a digital, digital platform. Once you play around with the resources and different platforms, the possibilities are endless. Just this past week, we've noticed several teachers creating lessons remotely and doing a phenomenal job. This is all new to us, so we encourage you to try some of these. And if you aren't successful, keep on trying it again, because the more you do it, the better you're going to get with it. So throughout this training this morning, um, we're going to walk you through some ways that you can teach guided reading, guided reading remotely to your students um, via pre-recorded lesson and also a live lesson. Um, and when you're doing these lessons, you want to make sure you include these three components, um, the new book, which also includes the new the introduction, comprehension focus, read with prompting and discussion. And of course, when you're doing a pre-recorded lesson, the read with prompting is going to look a little bit differently, but we'll walk you through um, what that will look like with the pre-recorded lesson. And you also want to make sure you include word work and um, a writing activity that goes along with the book. All right, so first step before you can do anything else is you have to have access to the digital books. So the first thing you're going to want to do is follow this link to set up an account. And hopefully it'll pull up in a minute. Technology is not on my side today. Um, no, you're fine. It'll load and, and get pulled up. Well, while we're, while we're waiting for that to load up, I'll show you on here. Once you've set up the account, um, you'll have access to the digital books and you're gonna click on the link that says read books and it'll give you access to um, a selection of text from, um, from literacy footprints, levels A through N. And actually now they have levels A through Q, the last I checked and it keeps on going, going and building. So looks like it's not loading. I tried to get on last night and mm -hmm. um, they were having some technical difficulties on their end. Okay, so it might be something going on with them, but you're gonna click on, you'll see that the three lines over here um, you click on there and there's possibly a um, Michelle, who's one of the creators of this, has done some pre-recorded lessons um, for for intro book introduction, for word work and for writing. And so you'll have access to that. You also have access to the book. It looks just like this. It does on here. Do you and want me to show it for you, Tara? I, it's coming up on my end. OK, now. OK, now it's coming up. So let's go ahead and show you guys. Is this it? I'm not logged yeah. in, though. I'm, I'm on here now. Oh, OK, great. It pulled up on mine finally. <laughs> awesome. But it might take forever to, okay, it's it's taking a couple minutes to get on. So we're gonna go ahead and, oh, <laughs> every time I try to give up on it. So you go ahead and sign up for an account. I already have an account. Check your junk mail because mine went to my junk mail the first time. You get on here and <clears throat> once you have an account, you have access to read the books. You'll click on to read books. You can see there's multiple levels. You'll click a level. You can pick out a book. If you see up here, it's got the little camera at the top, and that means that they've got access to um, different resources for the book, such as the book introduction. I'll show you kind of what it looks like. Word study, guided writing. There's lots of activities. You can see the books, pulling them up like that. It's it's great. It's a really great resource. I'm going to pull back up my page over here because I had a lot of teachers asking me um, help because they didn't know how to see their students while they were reading the books. I found this Chrome extension dual list. And so that's one way you can do it. You can see, I, I have it pulled up where the students see me, I can see the students and they can see the book. So that's a good um, extension. I've seen other ones around, people have been able to layer different windows. So play around with it, but you can make it work where you can see the students and the book at the same time. Okay, so when you are pre-recording your lesson, uh, I think it's really great because you can um, think about the students that you have maybe in level J and you can share this link with your students um, in view only so that they can have that guided reading lesson. Um, if you've never done a pre-recorded lesson or anything like this before, it does feel a little bit awkward and uncomfortable at the beginning because you are presenting as if the students are at the kidney table in front of you. Um, so it is a little bit awkward and you'll have to to um, give a lot of praise to your screen. And um, you also have to remind the students to press pause um, every once in a while so that they can have time to read the pages. And you also want to make sure you tell them specifically what materials they need to gather, especially if it's a transitional lesson, because they'll need something to write with during the reading. 
Um, you also want to make sure that you are clear with your directions so that the students can be um, successful independently because you're not there with them and you want to make sure you're giving lots of support more support um, per se is what you would if you were doing a guided reading lesson in the classroom um, you're going to see a new book introduction and a comprehension strategy and what you would do during the reading of a pre-recorded lesson in the discussion um, just little short videos so Kathleen, if you want, Kathleen, you want to you want to get pulling up these and go ahead and you can just show all three of these in a row. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Fun for pickles. In this story, Danny and Pickles do not want to go outside and play. They just want to sit in the house and watch TV. Read to find out what Danny and Pickles do to have fun. And so here's Danny and Pickles sitting watching television. Here's that long word television. Can you say that? Good. And they are going to put on a play. So right now they're writing the script. And Danny says that he wants to be a knight. That word night has a silent K. Night. Okay. So we have to read to find out if Danny and Pickles find something else that's fun that they want to do. Okay, click the comprehension strategy. Yes, please. If you're reading, I want you to think about who, what, and why. Go ahead and pause this video, and you will need paper and pencil, and I want you to record what you see on the screen in your notebook. Okay, do that now. All right, good job. So as you're reading for Chapter 1, I want you to pick an important character and write their name here and then tell what that character did and why they did it. For an example, in chapter one, I can choose Pickles. What did he do? Was bored. Why? Because he had to go outside and play. Okay. So that's what I want you to do after you read chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three. Okay, you may now begin reading. And then during the reading discussion. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you may now begin reading. Push pause if you need more time for each page. Now, go ahead and record who the most important character was, what they did, and why they did that. After you complete that for chapter one, go ahead and start reading chapter two. So that sounds like it's so much fun putting on a play. I bet Pickles was a great dragon. Look at your table that you created during your reading. Read who you chose for chapter one, what they did and why. Read who you chose for chapter two, what they did and why. And read who you chose for chapter three, what they did and why during this time. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the, the good thing about Screencastify, and that's what I used, um, plus the digital text um, and uh, Google Slides, but the good thing about Screencastify is 
Um, we're going to make a mistake. I mean, we all make mistakes, even in the classroom. But you just um, keep going in your recording. And then after you're finished, you can go back and cut the part out or, you know, erase the part that you do not want so that you don't have to record the entire video again. Um, you'll also see a live lesson. Um, we've already read the book. Um, we've, and now we are discussing the comprehension strategy that he um Actually, I'm introducing the, the comprehension strategy that I want him to use during the reading. And so Kathleen, you if you can show that video. Yep. Oops. Yes. This is where he looks a little sad, and and the birds and Buster like happy that he sees the library. Yeah. So I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder what the problem is going to be. So I'm going to go back to the front, and as you're reading, I want you to think about these five things: the characters. Setting, setting and the problem in the problem okay we're just going to look at those three things because we're only going to read chapters one and two. Oh. okay so you're going to read i'm going to turn the pages for you and i want you to read okay it was saturday morning ricky was walking to the library Okay, so also, when you're doing a pre-recorded lesson on Screencastify, you also have the option of showing your face during the video or you can not show your face during the video. So that's another um, option you can have on when you're pre-recording your lessons. Okay, so we're going to watch a live lesson in just a minute on um, on what I did is I just did a Google Meet. Actually, I think this was Zoom, but you can do it through Google Meet. And so that's a great opportunity when you're doing a live lesson is you're actually able to get in there and prompt the students and help them out. And you can both see the screen. It's not as easy as when you have a student sitting next to you reading, but it's just another good opportunity. And if Kathleen, you wouldn't mind clicking on the picture. The principal came inside. Oh, go to something. Go back and fix it. Let's do a slow check on that word inside. Ready? Inside. Into. Oh, go back and reread it. Good job. The principal came into the classroom. So you can see it's just another op good opportunity to meet with the kids and help them while they're reading during a live lesson. Um, the good thing about a live lesson also is you can have that conversation with the students after they read. So this is just a quick um, example of us doing the five finger retail and having that conversation after he's already read the book. You might wouldn't mind clicking on the video. I know the picture, Miss Kathleen. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Thank you. me. Use your thumb. Put your thumb up. Who are the characters in the story? Ricky and Buster mm -hmm. and the librarian. Good. And the next one is the setting. So the setting took place at the library. Good. And the last one? The problem. problem. What was the problem? So um, Buster was too loud. And uh, the librarian said that he had to be quiet, so uh, she said that he'll have to take him outside. Yeah. So how'd that bust, how'd that make Buster feel? Sad. Okay, so some material options um, students should have for these live lessons is they can have a dry erase board, paper and pencil, a chalkboard. My nephew even used a magnet during our lessons. 
and the teachers. There's lots of different options for digital books, such as the Pioneer Valley, and there's other good ones that I listed below. Um, you want to have your Next Step Forward and Guided Reading book. And if you have a, um, a copy of the comprehension cards, that would be a great resource as well. So for word work, um, this is the portion of the lesson where you can get really creative. Um, when you're pre-recording your lesson, you just um, tell the students what materials they may need and you give them instructions um, through your recording of what you want them to do. Um, here's an example of a pre-recorded word work um, using an analogy chart. And Kathleen, if you could click on the picture, please. Now we will begin word study. Go ahead and get some paper and a pencil and write what you see on the screen in your notebook. All right, good job. I have the word car on the left side and the word boat on the right. When I hear the word car, I hear the R. When I hear the word boat, I hear the Oh, so I'm going to say some words. And if you hear the R like in car, I want you to write the word underneath the word car in your notebook. If the word sounds like it has the O, like the word boat, I want you to write it underneath the word boat in your notebook. Okay. If you need more time, just press pause on your screen. Sharp. Hard. Coach. Check it. Were you right? Now I want you to read all the words underneath of the word car. Sharp. Now let's read the words underneath of boat. Coach, floating, moan. Great job. If you did not spell the words correctly, just go back and fix it. Okay, great job. Okay. All right, so um, that was using a pre-recorded lesson using Google Slides. You can also, um, if you want your students to actually manipulate the letters and do things for word work, you can um, create a Google Slide and you can um, copy that link and have it um, so that the students can edit and they can do the word work and they can send it back to you. Um, here's an example of um, a word work Google slide that's more interactive. And um, Kathleen, if you want to press, I can't see the screen, but if you want to press uh, make a big word. Okay. Or Terry, I think Terry can do that too. Here. Okay, I've got it pulled up. So you can see over here, there's lots of different examples. This is all created out on a Google slide. Mm -hmm. And um, these were um, suggested to us from Casey Bishop. She's a second grade teacher at Jaytown Elementary. So um, thank you, Casey, for walking us through this and showing us how to do create these word work slides. Um, but you just the student will just press the um, audio button so they can hear the word and then. I don't think they can hear from my end, but <laughs> trust us, it works. <laughs> and then the student can drag the letters into the box to, to spell the word. And then to check on themselves, they click on the red um, click here button. And I've uploaded a video using Screencastify and they can check on themselves to see if they were right. Yeah. So I just walk them step by step on how to do it. This is awesome, ladies. I love the interaction and I know students um, 
and parents too will appreciate being able to hear, you know, see the instructions and then hear and then check themselves. This is great. Yeah, it's right. a great resource. <laughs> we want them to be as independent, um, you know, they're being independent, so we want them to be successful with it. Um, you can also do picture sorts the same way. They listen to the audio and they'll drag the picture under the correct medial vowel that they hear. Yeah, I'm moving them around. You can see, you just press the sound button and then you can click, press the click here and it's got all the answers. Here's an example of the <laughs> analogy okay. chart. Sorry. It's okay. Or it's the same thing. You can just click on it. You can put everything in a text box and be able to move it over. Press the sound button. And after you've finished it, you can press the click here. And then um, the biggest thing is that these magnetic letters that Casey put together, she put each one in an individual's um, text box. So all you have to do is make a copy of it and then you can add it to whatever slide you want to. So there it is right there. So it's just if you're interested. Yeah, if you're interested in creating something like this, um, at the end of our slide deck, we do have um, examples of these and how to do these as well in our slide deck. Okay. So also during live lessons, you can also do, um, use a Jamboard. This is my personal favorite. So um, creating a Jamboard is really easy and I'll show you some of the examples in a second. If, Kathleen, if you wouldn't mind clicking on um, new word video, they could see that and then I can kind of walk them through how to create a Jamboard really quickly. Okay. First, what comes next, what comes next, what comes last? Okay, close your eyes. What's missing? Now you can look again. Oh. Let's see if you're right. Are you right? Yeah. Okay, close your eyes. What's missing? Open your eyes. What's missing? The O and the G. What comes first? The G. Then comes the... Oh, let's see if you're right. Are you right? Yeah. What's the word? Good. Very good. Close your eyes one more time. Are they closed? Yeah. Okay, give me one second. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay. So I'll show you how to create a Jamboard. I love this. Um, it's on your, if you look on your, pull up the, pull all the way down from your waffle. It's over here at the bottom of the waffle. And also Tara, if it's something that you use a lot, um, mm -hmm. just to let our viewers know, you could click on Jamboard and hold it and drag up and you can rearrange those apps inside your waffle. Oh, good, good um, hint, because I did not know that. Good, thank you for the, <laughs> thank You're you for the tip. <laughs> so it may be in a different place for other people if they've moved their apps around inside there. So. Okay, okay, well, that's good to know. But I love Jamboard. You can see I put an analogy chart on here and sound boxes. All, I, all you do for that is you add an image from doing, doing a Google image search. You can also, um, that was just something I could do. You can see that you can use the pen option and be able to write on here. I'm writing on there. You can, like I said, I downloaded another um, picture for a five finger retail. I did um, the ABCs and then with this, these, oh, but these, all these are is um, the posted. So you can just, the sticky notes, all you can do is just add letters for here to make um, sticky notes and make new letters. And then the old one, it's interactive. You can share it with your students. You can rename it. There's so many different options for the jam boards. I just love it. So. That was, that's just how to use the jam boards and we'll have some more examples later on. Um, so some of the work, work um, teacher materials is again, the next step forward and guided reading book, a whiteboard, magnetic letters, um, optional student materials are letters that either are magnetic or paper made or maybe even game pieces. Um, a dry erase board, paper and pencil, chalkboard, and you can, my nephew used the magnet, whatever you have available or whatever the students have available to use for word work. Yep. The good thing about um, <clears throat> word work or and all this that we're doing for teaching guided reading remotely is that it doesn't have to stop at this NTI um, 
time. We can also use these things in the classroom when we do have that chance to go back. Um, this is a pre-recorded writing lesson. Um, it's the same comprehension strategy that you've seen earlier. Um, we're just taking it into writing. And Kathleen, we don't have to show that video. Oh, okay. Um, but when you are um, doing a pre-recorded lesson, you want to make sure that you tell the students to maybe read it to someone in their family, um, just so they can have um, some accountability. And you can also use the Jamboard. Again, I'll just click on it and show you how I used it during writing. I know we don't have that much time, so I'll just show you very quickly. Um, you can, again, use the post-its. You can fill it out together and then share it. And he wrote it and sent it back to me. So get another good option for during writing time. Yep. And if you have um, some relationships with your parents, you can have the, the parent maybe send a completed writing to you via email or a text message or class dojo just so that you can give them some feedback on the writing. Again, writing materials, same as the other ones, paper, writing utensil, index cards, post-it notes, virtual whiteboards, anything you can get on your hands, your hands on for writing. Um, our team, our district literacy team, has created this um, Google site. It's it's finally finished and up and running. It's live, and um, we sent it to school coaches, school literacy coaches on Friday. And this is just a site where you can. Um, we have guided reading lessons from pre A all the way to level S, um, pre recorded lessons, and you can click on them, and you can either send the link to your students who are in that guided reading group. Or you can just watch it to give you tips and strategies on how you can create your own lessons. And um, we also have read alouds here um, for both primary and intermediate. And we use the modules from Jane Richardson, the comprehension strategies, as well as we align them with um, standards. So, so this is a great resource for you to use. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I also... Um, will say that I have linked it up on the teacher backpack. So teachers, if you go to your K through five, whichever grade level you are, teacher backpack, it will be under the content specific. So here's the NTI district uh, support site, as well as a tutorial for how to use that site. So that is um, a place where you can access that. So thanks, Kathleen. You're welcome. That's awesome. Well, thank you, ladies, so much. As always, great information. And I'm even using this at home with my kindergartner. So oh, okay. I appreciate um, you and your time. Yes, yeah, she loves the drag. She loves those. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. Thank Kathleen. you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Yes, thank you all. Thank you. Hello, everyone. If you are just joining us, uh, my name is Kathleen Receiver, and I am one of the digital innovation leaders. Um, I work with the Zone 2 crew for elementary and... Uh